Bronx historically has been a, a borough of struggle. This is a long history of, of um, displacement, of white supremacy, of capitalism, just kind of manifesting in really ugly ways. Um, some people call the Bronx the forgotten borough. When I was growing up here, um, I couldn't wait to leave here. I, there wasn't anything in my school curriculum that made me love the Bronx. There wasn't anything in my curriculum that made me appreciate or know any of the history of the Bronx. That's, that's why I got into farming because the more I learned about the food industry and the farming industry, it just felt unacceptable. I just, it doesn't make sense that we are eating toxic food. And it doesn't make sense that there are neighborhoods where that's the only option. So I just had to ask myself, well, what can I do to work on this? When they were first developing, it wasn't about food in essence. It really was about, about taking, taking ownership of a community where so many people left. They didn't want to live in, in you know, neighborhoods surrounded by abandoned buildings and, and empty lots. And those that could not move stayed and formed this community garden. That's why they call it community garden, because it took a village, a community of people to come together to take back their community, to make it safe, and then to beautify it. I started gardening in the 80s in my backyard, and from there I moved on to community gardens because there was a vacant lot in front of me. Um, like so many other vacant lots, that, that was happening throughout New York City at the time. And so I got community gardening started back then in 1988. As a matter of fact, the Garden of Happiness, my garden is now 30 years of age. And so that's where I got my activism. That's where I got my really my bumped on my passion. And then uh, recently, four years ago, started a farm with my friends, Rising Root Farm up in Chester, New York. I was interested in herbal medicine and how to heal the body using plants. Yes. And I was getting interested in herbal medicine at the same time that I was doing community organizing work. Um, so it kind of just developed from food as medicine to just how do you grow food, period, and how do you connect to the land as much as possible. So what I try to do is make, first of all, make people realize that agriculture from an African-American perspective is in my DNA. My people were agrarian people. This is what they knew how to do. And this is what happened when they were enslaved and brought in here to work in agriculture. That history is not being told of the, the, of the importance of Africans that came here enslaved, the history of they, the knowledge that they knew about agriculture the knowledge they knew about the certain ways how to, to grow crop, how to, to plant seeds, how to do irrigation, all that has been dismissed as if we didn't know. We were brought here for that knowledge of agriculture. And so what I try to do is to make sure that we're gonna talk about a food system, where is our place as black people? You know, black and brown people, where are our place in agriculture? Yeah, six, three, <laughs> two, <laughs> 12, right? I'm learning a lot from the kids. I work with a lot of youth who were farmers like back home in different countries in Africa. And I'm just like, this is crazy. You have like the most important skill <laughs> ever. You know how to grow food. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to learn from them. So I'm just trying to keep the conversation going. Most of empty lots, um, incineration, incinerators, uh, waste dumping plants are mostly in low-income neighborhoods and neighborhoods of color. And so now, moving forward, you understand that's environmental racism, how those things are done in low-income communities and communities of color. And then also the narrative behind that. And so what was happening when we were first moving in 
our neighborhoods. We were homeowners. We were uh, middle class uh, employment people, but yet living near that community, sorry, living near that empty lot, people were, asso were associating us with garbage. Most community gardens are in low-income neighborhoods and community of color. And now we're seeing this sort of resurgence of, of quote, urban agriculture. But the fact is, is that these gardens have been here for so long. They've been the mainstay of so many of uh, communities. And now what these community gardens are starting to realize is that power dynamic of owning land and having the ability to grow their own food. Because it's a way of, again, erasing our heritage, erasing our connection to land. But now you're seeing young people of color understanding that power that they have the connection to land, that's number one. And also the power they have growing their own food. Food that's culturally appropriate. The food that they see now in, in the, in the, in the um, bodegas and on the street, that's junk food. And they know that's killing us. Type 2 diabetes, hypertension, obesity, taking insulin end stage renal diseases. These are young, these are young caretakers. So now they gotta take care of their mother, they gotta take care of their parents or grandparents and make sure they take the insulin, right? They have to also, some of them may have now amputations because of diabetes, so they have to take care of them. They have strokes. So the young people are seeing the ill effects of what has happened with our food, the processed food, the fast food, the junk food, and they're seeing within their family members. And they're seeing the correlation between food and diet. And they don't wanna go that way. Who wants to take a loved one to dialysis three times a week, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday? I've seen it. And so you have young people saying, I don't want to go down that road. People of color are naturally connected to the land. I think we are people of the land, um, whether we're herbal doctors or farmers or chefs, um, etc. So yeah, this is just a way of going back to basics. This is my way of connecting to the planet as a real human being outside of like society and oppressive structures. I feel like when it's all said and done, these are the concrete tasks that we should know and that we used to be, you can be better about it. We don't all have the privilege and the access to healthy foods. Um, but there are small ways like knowing where your nearest community garden is to get some produce that you would normally get from the supermarket and to be able to support local farmers and to support our own health. If society breaks down tomorrow, you know how silly it would be if none of us knew how to grow our own food? That's really why I'm here, because I would feel so stupid if the zombies came <laughs> and society exploded, crumbled, and I didn't even know how to grow a tomato. Like, what have I been doing all these years? That's my real answer for the first question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>